All right. I guess uh, before we start, I guess we should introduce ourselves. Right? Yeah, it's a good idea. It's usually how we do start. Yeah. Except sometimes on our podcast, we're like five minutes in before we actually introduce ourselves. People just listening to noise. So <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm Richard Lefave. I'm part of the Loudest Geeks in the Room with uh, Mr. Reddy over here. I appreciate you introducing me. Very cool. I'm the odd man out. Uh, my name is uh, Matt uh, Provencal. Uh, I am originally from Montreal. I've lived in Ottawa for a little bit, but uh, originally from Montreal, my podcast is Cross the Streams Radio, and we do an all Ghostbusters podcast. And the Ghostbusters of Montreal are in the house, and they're absolutely fantastic. I'm really good friends with them. So if you do see their booth, just say hi and take a photo with the Ecto one. But uh, yeah, I've been doing podcasts for about uh, five years. This year is our fifth anniversary, and we do. Uh, Ghostbusters podcast to talk about 80s pop culture, but these guys are all Ottawa based and so am I. So we wanted to come here and share our love of podcasting, show what some good, awesome tips and tricks on what you can do to make the show better. We're, we're about a year old, just over a year. Uh, we're, our 100th episode is going to run concurrently with our second year in February. A little bit of time, not, not like the veteran here, Matt. Oh, no, it's not a veteran. <laughs> but we do have backgrounds in. Uh, other public speaking type stuff. I got a karaoke host in Ottawa. So yeah, my, one of my local singers right here, pandering to the audience. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, it, it does help if you have a somewhat of a voice or musical background, but uh, you don't you don't have to. If you have a great subject or you have a great passion, just by having that, you're already you're already sold. You're already going to have a great time. And. Uh, as long as you can find somebody else that has the exact same passion, then it's going to make the conversation so much easier. Or not even that, just a, someone that opposes your passion. Not opposes, but uh, has a different view or different take, because we argue all the time. Oh, yeah, so. Half the time I hate him, half the time I love him. <laughs> and then he posts me in the stomach. <laughs> so I think we're going to start off with a, a little video that we did. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Nothing that I did, because this is something yeah. I did. We're here. Tomorrow, radio is dying and podcasting is taking over. Here at the Loudest Geeks in the Room, our podcast experts have come together to teach you, yes you, how to record your own podcast. We're all very professional. This is Billy. Billy thinks he's pretty funny and has a lot to say. He wants to start podcasting. Well, Billy, I think I can help you with that. Come along with me on a learning adventure. First step is to have an idea. So what do you want to talk about? Can I talk about the fun things I do at school and stuff like that? That's a terrible idea, Lily. No one wants to listen to a show like that. Come up with something better. Can I talk about my hobby? Good idea, Billy. What's your hobby? I collect stamps and coins. <laughs> You're not getting this, are you? Stop being bored. Uh, what about my talk about uh, government conspiracies like that uh, Joe Rogan guy? There you go. Now you're getting it. The next step is drink some beer, smoke some pot. Your favorite podcast is all drink beer, smoke pot. All the time. So get in there and mess up your life. As long as you don't overdo it, you'll be fine. It's been a couple days. Let's see how Billy is doing. Now next, Billy. <laughs> Billy? Well, shit. Billy went a little bit too far and got hooked on heroin. So, um, I guess that concludes episode one of Learning How to Podcast. We'll be back in a bit when we get a new assistant. Stay tuned. <laughs> now, obviously, we don't actually condone any drug use. <laughs> The Loudest Geeks in the Room does not condone drug use. And Cross the Streams does not uh, subscribe to Black Tar Heroin. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. So yeah, like it, like it helps when you have friends. That's one. Uh, two, uh, it helps a lot when you have someone with different views, but also the same kind of passion. So obviously, mine's been Ghostbusters for the longest time. This, is the th this year is the 30th anniversary of it, so I love talking about it. Uh, but I also love Star Wars, and I love... Star Trek uh, movies and TNG and all that stuff. I also love uh, certain animes, uh, Adventure Time, all that stuff. So if you can kind of pool your resources together, you're going to have a great time. And uh, hey, yeah, owner of Cross Street Studio. I'm co host, but it's cool. That's <laughs> owner cool. sounds better. Owner sounds better. Manager. <laughs> sounds like you make money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, just realized, like, I totally did the screens wrong, and I have the presentation screen on my laptop and the laptop screen up there. But I don't care, because it sits there anyway. You That's cool. You get to see what's coming up next. That's yeah, cool. Exactly. That's fine. Excellent. Podcasting 101. Equipment. So before we get into equipment, um, I'll just poll the audience. What do you guys think you might need? What's the first step? Yes. A microphone is a step one. That's cool. Yes. 
What's the second step? Yes. Some audio editing. <laughs> <laughs> I see where this is going to go. Okay, very cool. Yes, audio editing software helps. What's more important? Screens. <laughs> yeah, we can switch this. What do you think is more important? A computer in time. A computer in time. <laughs> yes. Computer. What's the last thing? Yes. The podcast? What's that? The person who's podcast? Yes. 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 Thank you. I think yes. the host host is very important. Host goes, exactly. Um, another side note I can say is the internet. <laughs> That's another thing, too. Very the important. Computer, very important. Uh, you can't share. I, I, would be, I would love to subscribe to a podcast that would mail a DVD to my mailbox. I would. I'd just throw it out there. Someone could do that first and then like send me a disc. It's like the old Netflix of podcasts. <laughs> the old Netflix of podcasts. Very cool. But yeah, no, um, if, you, if you have those tools, and again, they're really relatively inexpensive. So something like this here, I'm just going to pick this up. This is a Zoom recorder, audio recorder. I'm just going to record this little uh, podcast thing that we're doing. You can get one of those for about 100 bucks or under. And you can find uh, microphones like these guys. Uh, USB-powered microphones are fantastic. Uh, one piece of equipment that I highly recommend is something from Blue. So the company uh, Blue makes uh, amazing microphones for Mac and PC. You just plug it in through USB and they're, they're incredible. Actually, in the video, when uh, Richie and uh, Adam are, are fighting, I'm actually holding it they're up. holding a blue microphone snowball. And that's uh, kind of like a go-to for, for podcasting because it's great for capturing room audio and also uh, direct voice. Who well. said Yeti back there? Yeah, somebody said Yeti. Great yes. mic for podcasting. Yes. Snowball's really good. I picked this thing up from a pawn shop for about 60 bucks. It, it, just, it just shows that... It doesn't have to be expensive to get good quality audio. It's true. And if your morals are low and you're willing to sell yourself for the microphone, that also helps as well, too. Well, yeah, I don't mean to tell you how I made the money. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You don't want to know how we made the money. <laughs> the, Yeti, uh, the Yeti and the Yeti Pro are fantastic. The Yeti Pro has a XLR input, so if you want to put it into a, a mixer board, you can. But really, for ease of use, USB is the way to go. You're going to have a great time with it. Yeah. You, want, you want to look for one with uh, compression technology already inside of it because it works as its own sound card essentially. And one with a compressor, which most of them, to be fair, are, mm -hmm. uh, will make sure that you don't peek out on your mic, won't pop the microphone, won't have sound to go. Get one of those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having issues over here. Oh, great. <laughs> that's okay. He's going to figure that out. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, equipment, that's, that's key. Uh, and also computer and internet connection. But before you get started, what's, what would you say, just again, pull the audience, what do you say is the best starting point to find out how to get started on podcast? Yes? Find a subject. Find a subject. Exactly. Step one. Exactly. It's like you know our PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Uh, we can also, uh, so knowing your subject, knowing um, what's also important is your audience. Try to gauge right out of the gate who you're going to want your listeners to be. You don't have to pick them. You may be surprised, actually, on who your listeners actually are over the long term. And clearly, I, I have been. I, I've seen fans on, on, on Facebook. I've seen a huge bunch uh, that, are, that are incredible that do uh, um, communication through Facebook, through Twitter, um, that I never thought possible. I thought these people were actually making fun of us or they, they were actually trolling us. But they were actually, um, they were actually just trying to communicate. They were just trying to share their ideas. So having an audience or, or engaging that audience is very, very important. Um, um, yeah. One of one of the ways that we started really to try to engage with our audience was weekly when we do our show, we ask questions. We ask for questions. You have anything that you want us to answer, and it sort of keeps the audience involved. It feels it makes people feel like they're part of the show, and it gives us more material. To and we let them just ask anything ridiculous. Like we had a question last week, someone asked about if lasagna would be a great super villain or not so we just ran with it so don't set parameters for your questions just say hey send us a question and it just creates its own content from there i'll uh, i'll do a shout out to another podcast that is not here obviously but um in the united states there's a uh, voice of the republic they're a great uh, star wars podcast i was uh, fortunate to be a, a guest on i'm not sure if you guys have heard of it but um, they have something called the Republicom, where they give you a phone number and you can call and leave a voicemail, and then they'll play it on the on the air when they're recording through Skype or Google Hangouts. And uh, you can say whatever you want; it's pretty much uncensored, but it will be played. So be watchful of what you say, because it will end up on uh, on YouTube and so forth. But uh, it's a great way of finding out who's listening regularly. And um, You've mentioned, Chris, that the, the fastest way to kill a podcast is not to have a, 
a schedule on how frequent you want to release an episode. Yeah, consistency is, is it, key. Yeah. It, it, you will ruin yourself the fastest by missing episodes. If you set a time, a uh, schedule, you follow that schedule because people leave. They, they don't want to not know when the show's coming out. Consistency is a big thing because people, uh, you it's like you're becoming accountable for an audience and they, they, they expect that your content is going to be there. We generally put our shows out Saturdays. If there's a problem, we, we'll let people know saying, okay, tech problems, we're going to have it out as soon as possible. Um, before we get off equipment, I did want to bring up this thing that I found. Oh, yeah. If you are one person doing a podcast, this is called a pop filter. It is the best thing that you can spend $15 on. It will stop your P's and your T's from coming out that harsh. It'll smooth over your voice, and it's just a piece of fabric inside of a, a circle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and studios will use that so uh, for vocals, for singing, but mainly for voice. So you don't have... <laughs> now, we do have our last uh, bullet point there is uh, upgrading equipment. We just recently upgraded. We're now using a soundboard and uh, three uh, XLR microphones uh, to get a better, uh, more higher quality sound. More higher. I me fail English. <laughs> but, uh, but like it says, it's a future you problem. Start. Give yourself a starting point. Don't try to rush and buy everything right away. Give yourself room to grow. Yeah. Yeah, because you can start off with the top gear right out of the gate, but if you really don't have a handle on how to use it, your listeners will know. So it's really, sometimes it's actually beneficial to start with really crappy gear. Like find stuff from a pawn shop or get stuff secondhand, or if you know a friend, you know, wants to sell you uh, a microphone for 20 bucks, or you find something at, uh, I don't know, Giant Tiger or something like that, or, or in a dollar store. Try that out and see how it works, but you'll only get better through uh, trial and error. That's the uh, best uh, word of advice I can give you guys. Like if you listen to our early podcasts, please don't. Uh, <laughs> you'll, it's painful because we're awkward and we don't really have a flow yet, and our... Uh, cast, for lack of better terms, hadn't been finalized. Uh, we've had a, bit, a few changes, and we've uh, we found a really good niche with who we have, and uh, we're really happy mm -hmm. with uh, what we're doing right now. Cool. Um, the last thing on that page was buy a domain name, buy a domain name, because that's super important. If you want to develop your stuff, you want to have a .com, .ca, something that people can easily link to, and it, it doesn't even have to be for podcasting. It's just sort of a general rule. Have a place on the web that you can call your own. It's like having your own little clubhouse. And it's a great thing to have. Yeah, um, it's always great to start with the social media first because it's free, right? So get a Facebook account, get a Twitter account. Twitter is great for instantaneous stuff. So like for today, letting people know that you're here at Montreal Comic Con, letting people know where you are so they can touch base with you, Twitter is, is perfect for that. For Facebook, it's good for promotion and that's free. But like Chris said, eventually once you start building an audience, look at GoDaddy.com, look at a few other places and get a, um, a domain name, your little piece of the internet, and that, that will help immensely because it will direct your traffic and into um, having a better uh, better portfolio. So it will help you track your stats. I was going to say, <laughs> you have better access to your stats, which we'll get into in a bit. Yes? Uh, on that slide, I know we're going to go back to it, but you also had to have uh, audio editing uh, software. Yes, yes, which we'll recommend for sure. We uh, have recommendations? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, Audacity is my favorite by, by far. It, it's free. It's open source and you have every tool you will ever need to use. And if you can't find it in the software, because it's open source, people create so many plugins for it, and every board, every message board that you look at will have helpful advice. It's a really open, helpful community. Cool. I uh, didn't, I, I knew Jack about sound editing when we started this. Like, sound engineering I can do, because I run carry shows, I, I, I make things sound good. But editing, and he taught me how to edit on Audacity in uh, an hour, and it was it's simple. So I, I do the first round of our editing now. Cool. Audacity is definitely great for, for multiple platforms. Um, if you guys are running things off of a Mac, um, apart from GarageBand, which is a great way to start, uh, because you have a preset podcast filter, a preset voice filter, if you want to get a little bit more, um, I would recommend actually Final Cut Pro. So if you guys have access to that software, you can use the audio, drop it right in, and then uh, you can actually apply uh, immediate audio filters um, without having to deal with Logic, because Logic Pro is very heavy. Like uh, I wouldn't recommend it right out of the gate, but 
things like uh, GarageBand and Final Cut on the Mac are absolutely incredible for audio. So if you if you do have a, a Mac at the house, iMac, uh, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, those are going to be uh, very handy pieces of software. But Audacity, um, if you have a custom PC, will handle the audio incredibly well. So yeah, all great, all great suggestions. Cool. Thank you for your for the throw. In. Thank you. So we touched on briefly earlier. What the heck do I talk about? And talk about your passion. We're comic book movie, TV, pop culture geeks. So that's what we focus on on our podcast. And we, we're all, we all have opinions, and we're not afraid to share them with each other. We're not afraid to argue with each other, because at the end of the day, it's it's all fun, and we know we know each other fairly well, so we're not going to go home and cry. Yeah, he, <laughs> it's true. I, I rag on him a lot. <laughs> I'll be bullying you. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, another thing is, uh, do you want a structured podcast or do you want something a little more flexible, free form? And we we started off, we tried a structure, and we found it wasn't suiting our needs very well, and it made things really awkward. So we just would turn on the mic and start talking. Now, because of a recent problem we had with audio dropouts, we started uh, saving partway through and we started making segments so we ended up evolving into a format but it was organic so it, we didn't feel forced it just developed and that's the other thing your podcast will constantly evolve yeah growth is a, is a really important part I mean there's no wrong way to set up a format for a show but you find what's best for you and it doesn't happen right away and you don't get an audience right away it it's a development process there we go, we're in the vault. <laughs> we just touched on the... Who wrote like, that? It's like, we know. <laughs> uh, I will uh, definitely speak to this last point. Skype and uh, Google Hangouts has uh, greatly improved over the last, uh, last year. So if you have friends that are in different provinces or different cities or uh, even different uh, countries, you can actually coordinate it so that you can have a group conversation all, all in one, which is fantastic. Uh, we've had on Cross the Streams guests from California. We have guests from uh, the UK. Uh, we've had guests from Australia uh, come on the show, uh, specifically uh, Tristan Jones from uh, IDW. Uh, he's working on the new Ghostbusters Ninja Turtles comic book that's going to come out very soon. And uh, he's from uh, Melbourne. So he's come on the show uh, multiple times and ranted about uh, Ghostbusters 3 news and ranted about uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, especially the, the new Michael Bay produced movie, so he's, he has a great opinion about that. Um, I will say, yeah. if, you're, if you're doing Skype, for everyone who's writing things down, iFree Skype Recorder is the best thing that I've found to record directly from Skype. It only takes the audio, so if you're doing video stuff, you're going to have to play around with the softwares, but cool. it's and, yeah, great. That's awesome. And for the Mac, uh, there's a software called uh, Audio Hijack Pro, which I highly recommend. It's going to grab the audio from things like Safari, you grab audio from any program that's running, and you'll get, uh, if you have your USB microphone plugged into your computer, um, it'll take the audio and record it on a separate track and then grab the audio from your software. So it'll sound like a perfectly stereo mixed uh, 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 podcast, and then you can just edit it later. Ooh, that's an important thing back to the equipment. Sure. A lot of USB mics only pulled in from mono. If you pull in, try to do a stereo recording from them, uh, you'll get one channel that's really loud and one that's really quiet. Yeah. So you want to always change it to a mono sound. So, yeah, because uh, the best way to explain that is um, you ever listen to uh, music and you got your headphones on and then only one side is playing and the other side is completely off and it feels like, oh my god, I'm deaf in one ear. <laughs> I, uh, I have lost my hearing. I knew I shouldn't went to that. I knew I knew I shouldn't went to heavy MTL. <laughs> this is a bad idea. So this is uh, this is just um, it's normal. It's mono. So you might hear that when you're editing. So there's usually inside software where you can split the audio so it duplicates it on the other track. Um, if you need help with that, there's some really great tutorials on splitting audio in uh, Final Cut Garage Band and also in uh, the Adobe software mm -hmm. as well too. So yeah, great, cool, good team. A good team. <laughs> Obviously, you're not going to want to sit around with people you don't like, so uh, start off with your friends. Reddy and I have known each other for about 10 years. Too long. <laughs> a very long time. 
and we we know we know how to press each other's buttons, and we know how to make that work to make a good argument. And Some, sometimes a really good thing is going right up to that line and then backing away when you get to it, because it makes for some of the most entertaining stuff. Yeah, like I I, I always try to press his buttons, and <laughs> he yells at me all the time. <laughs> you gotta you gotta know your limit though. That's the, you 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 can gauge it from from friends. You know, you've been out. You've hung out uh, outside of the podcast, outside of work, outside of a whole bunch of things. So you'll know immediately what uh, what you can get away with. You also generally don't want to do that to any interviews that you have. Pushing them to their point is never really a good thing. Yeah. And you don't want people that are just going to sit there and agree with you the whole time because you're not really going to have a conversation. You're going to have someone talking and the other person going, uh-huh, uh-huh, the rest of the time. So yeah. like-minded people with varying opinions. That's true. Is the next thing about, okay, friends? Okay, so get friends. So pay for them. <laughs> get friends. Get right that time. You can, he pays you. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Okay, good. Some people go at it solo. Phrasing. The, the phrasing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what this means. <laughs> so I, I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts that have just one person talking, and, and they'll go and they'll, they'll talk and they'll talk, but generally about 10 episodes into their show, they'll lose steam. It's, mm. it's almost to me very important to have a secondary voice there to play off of because otherwise it becomes this narcissistic show and people start dropping off. Yeah, th th I always find the, the best podcasts are the ones that either work in twos or threes. Uh, that's just so that you can constantly have a conversation where you're listening into a conversation. You want to feel like you're in that same room. Uh, a really great podcast that uh, I enjoy listening to is uh, How Did This Get Made? I don't know if you ever listened to that where they listen about and talk about like the worst films ever made and, and technically how did it actually get made. Sometimes they'll actually invite the people that were involved with making it <laughs> and grilling them. So um, that, that's that got a perfect uh, chemistry because you have three people going back and forth and each saying their own opinions. They may not necessarily agree, but it, it just, it's, it's a great formula. So um, you can do it like a, a proper radio show. There's some amazing uh, CBC One uh, podcasts that are out there that it's a single host, but it's all about the guest. Remember that. When you start off a podcast, don't think of it like, I'm going to be famous. Do this as uh, you want to talk with people. You want to share their stories. That's what really what it should be about. Or sharing your own stories. Like uh, That's okay. Don't not talk about yourself, but don't always say, hey, I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, are you, ah. you are. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, we're next. Okay. Uh, we we do use a lot of community guests. Uh, we're we have a lot of friends at the comic book shop in Ottawa. It's actually called the comic book shop. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the booth is here. Yeah, they have. A, do they do have a booth here? So we get guys on from there. We have uh, one of the other local geek communities, Wonder Geeks Activates. Adam Tupper, he's the owner. He uh, started off as a recurring guest with us. Now he's part of the crew and he's on. Uh, every week, unless he's off doing his own uh, art stuff, which is really awesome. Um, local celebrities, we um, Lo local and not local. Lo right? Yeah, local, not local. Don't be afraid to ask. The worst someone can say to you if you ask if you want if they want to come to your podcast is no. I was recently after Ottawa Comic Con uh, ran into Tom Green at one of the bars I run karaoke at, and I was like, "Hey, we do a local podcast. You want to be on?" And he said, yeah, yeah, sure. He never contacted us, but who but cares, right? That, that's part of the course. I mean, I've had uh, some people in Toronto who ran shows, like actual space TV shows. They went, you know what, I'm out of the podcast game now. That's just not what I do anymore. And thank you very much. You know, cool. Listen if you want to, and yeah, you, you can't take it personally. And sometimes you'll be uh, getting drunk at a karaoke bar, <laughs> and uh, you'll run into people like uh, Jason Muse, and uh, you'll be there, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be thinking like, oh, this is some drunk guy, he's just getting high. Oh my god, it's Jay from Jay and Saw Bob. Okay, cool. Do you want to talk? He's like, yeah, sure. So it turns out he was promoting uh, in Toronto, um, um, Todd in the Book of Evil, which was on the Love Space that. Channel. And uh, he was there at Fan Expo, and uh, he looked pretty haggard. It looks like he just got off the plane. And so I thought he was just a fan that was like trolling uh, the Ghostbuster tent. And I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. But then I went, oh my god, so get the camera. So got my uh, fiance Mackenzie, grabbed the camera, and she uh, videotaped it, and uh, it was awesome. So we ended up putting him on across the streams. I am very, very jealous. He did air hunt me, so that was that's <laughs> I'm even more jealous. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, so. Yeah, so uh, it, uh, it's not. Um, a bad idea to listen 
to a lot of other podcasts. And not, not to necessarily take from what they do, but just to appreciate the, the kind of formula that they may have. I, I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. Do you like podcasting? Do I like podcasting? Yes. <laughs> and that's why you ask open-ended questions. See, that's why. See, there you go. Open-ended questions uh, are very important. Why do you like podcasting? What are your favorite things? How do that make you feel? Why really? do you do what you do? Yeah. So what, you... When's the next event that you're going to be planning? That That's going to encourage a conversation. Because so you, you were in a movie with Kevin Smith. Tell me, how did that start? Well, it all started. See, there you go. And it, it, the open-ended question will actually keep your interview going. You can always cut back if things are too long. You can't add any more than you have. Nothing's worst is... Um, so do you come to these things a lot? No. <laughs> okay, fine. Next question. Next question. Yeah, so it sucks. If, if you... It feels like you're hitting a brick wall. It feels like you've lost that connection. So a lot of times what's great is to just approach your guests it just as if you were you were friends with them, like just hang up and, and to kind of start that conversation first and then ask their permission if it's cool if we can record a conversation for the show and then you can kind of get a really natural kind of uh, approach from it, so it's very important. It's, it's also not a bad thing to ask hard questions, you just have to know when you push people too far. Um, I think John Gameshi has a good one about Billy Bob Thornton, oh, where geez. he asked him about his movie career yeah. when he was trying to promote his radio show. He's like, from then on, I just I, I had to really judge what questions I asked. But her questions aren't a bad thing. Never be afraid to ask a question. So we touched on a little bit with uh, interacting with your audience. Uh, another thing that we do is we try to get uh, local or not even just local uh, music onto our show to, to feature Bands. Like one of the people we use, uh, we've been using fairly frequently lately is uh, a local Toronto rapper, Word Burglar, who I love. And we just sent him an email, and so we already sent him an email or a uh, message or something, and said, uh, hey, can we use your music? He's like, yeah, I'd love that. So don't be afraid. Just reach out to people out there, and people will give you music. It's awesome. Yeah. Local musicians, uh, especially in town and also. Uh uh, in Ottawa as well, in Toronto, they're, they're, they're happy to share that information. Uh, they're happy to share their, their art because they want to get it out to different audiences. So if you if you position it properly and just say, listen, like this is what I'm planning to do, also set it, spell it out that this is going to be like a free thing from the start, then, mm -hmm. then they'll be more respective of your time. And also always promote their sites. Always give them due credit and promote their sites back to them. Uh, they'll be happy to work, happily or happier to work with you in the future, and you will never get burned for it. Uh, one of our, like our theme song now, is from local musicians. And it's great, they just said, here, have it, as long as you promote us, it's all yours. That's sweet. Cool. Easy. I like that. We were talking Listen to them. your fans. Okay. And uh, we, like I said, we get people ask us questions all the time. So we, we have people that reach out to us from different communities within Ottawa. Uh, we have about three or four, maybe five regular question askers. So, question askers. We made that a term last episode, didn't we? <laughs> Question askers. Question askers. We we like to come up with <laughs> dumb words. <laughs> yeah, no, it really does. It really does come into it. You have to listen to people, and they give you advice about your show. You don't necessarily have to take it, but you have to think about it and see if it can go into the show that you're working on. Oh, yeah. Editing. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I wanted to talk about um, Comic Con. If you like. Uh... <laughs> Comic books and science fiction, this is the place for you. Comic Con is the greatest event for geeks and nerds. I gotta say, hearing his voice from above is really creepy for me. So that's the voice of God. So that's, so that's the edited segment. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I hear on my And then uh, we'll go oh, to. <laughs> Now, that being said, you're not going to get all of the ums and ahs and likes out just because of some of the ways people talk. It just, it's in there and you don't have any room to wiggle with and if you try to cut it out, it's just going to sound really choppy. It'll sound like uh, The Simpsons with uh, Homer going like, I want to touch a sweet cat, sweet, sweet, sweet cat, you know? Uh, one of the, going to that. Mr. Black. That we Mr. Were Black. Working, that we were working on this a uh, couple weeks ago is when you think you're going to use a filler word, instead of going... Hey, how's it going? Um, things are great. It's take a pause. It never hurts to take a pause. You can always cut out extra extra time, extra space. Mm -hmm. 
and it makes you think about the next thing you're going to say. It's true. Uh, and also you can drown out a few words, like let it go a little bit longer because then it can restart what you want to say next. So it's important to try to cut out that filler. And as long as you're conscious of it, record yourself before you record on the podcast. It's the best piece of advice I can say. Give yourself a test so you can hear yourself talk, and that's going to trip you up. I'm sorry, you will. You'll be like, ah, oh, man, that's what I, my voice sounds like. Oh, I hate that. But when you hear yourself, you can see where the conversation is flowing because there's a difference of when you're thinking what you're going to say versus when it's finally laid out on on tape or on, on digital form. Tape. Ah, so, <laughs> oh, man, I dated myself already. <laughs> All right, we'll throw the edited version. Today I wanted to talk about Comic-Con. Comic-Con is the greatest event for geeks and nerds. If you like comic books and science fiction, this is the place for you. So great. Wow. So that was way shorter. Yeah, you, you cut down the amount of time that you have, and you can really speed up your pacing. I switched a couple of things in there just to change pacing on what we're doing. And that, that can change your listener's perspective on you. If you keep saying, hey, things are um, great, no one's going to want to listen to you. It sounds like you're listening to a children's show on a recorder, a tape recorder at that. To be fair, I normally sound like a child. <laughs> or act like one. <laughs> act like one. The, uh, you remember the Fisher Price uh, tape recorders? <laughs> That's how I started. Where you had to tape on top of the tapes? That's right. <laughs> we're old. We are very old. We're getting there. Uh, what well, you kind of can define your show. Sometimes there's things that, for if you want to have a very honest, forthcoming show, you don't want to cut out a lot of things. You want everything in there. But there are things, sometimes you may say something off the cuff that is really inappropriate and you probably don't want your audience to actually hear, so we, we, we tend to cut things yeah, like, like that. that. You... <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, if there's something inappropriate to be cut, it is me. <laughs> so yeah, no, editing, editing is important. And it's also your choice, too, if you want to have music in the background. You know, some radio shows will have like an underlining music track that's a good way of kind of killing out some dead air and to make it feel like, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm listening to a radio show. But if not, if you really want it to be about podcasts or more about the conversation, make it sound like you're actually in the room, sometimes limiting that music and just having voices is cool. And then you can throw in music as a buffer or a bumpers to the next segment. All right. We're going to try to get through this fast because this is pretty dry stuff. <laughs> but it's important. It, um, the important stuff is, is boring stuff. We forgot candy this time. We didn't forget candy. I, I can start stripping. Nobody needs it. Okay, so there is a one camera there, and, uh, one camera there, and we have a third floor. Uh, the, there would be a very bright lights. <laughs> and then the police would show up. <laughs> As they know, they do. All right, so the RSS feed is how you're going to get your content out to the people. It's, it's how you push it to iTunes, it's how you push it to Stitcher. It's, mm -hmm. it's really how a lot of people connect to what you're doing. Um, you have to put in links to subscribe, links to your iTunes account, and get as many reviews as you can. The way that we put our RSS feed is through Blogger because it automatically does that when you put in event links. Next. <laughs> Let's get cool. through this. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really, it's like, like, the best resource is just to type in, like, how to create RSS feed yeah. online because it's, it's pretty dry. Um, Stats! Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook does that. Who, who here has uh, raised their hands? Uh, Facebook page that they've made. Anybody? Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. Very nice. You know, sometimes you can go to it, and you'll see like all these numbers of like who's seen your post, and you're like, 34 people have seen my page, I'm famous, yay. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll quit my job tomorrow. Um, your views are not the most important thing on that. That's, That's right. Your, uh, your reach is. Mm -hmm. Your reach is how many people you can possibly get. That's right, it's how many people have actually seen it. How, how, how many people have actually come across it in their newsfeed. Uh, that could be in Facebook, that could be a few other places as well, too. Uh, but stats can, can be helpful on gauging how how popular uh, your your posts are or how you're actually engaging your audience. Um, but they're also pretty dangerous because you, a lot of the time you'll look at stats and you'll base your entire show off the stats. You'll go, oh, that show did, and you'll compromise what you're trying to do because, hey, my stats were really high on that episode. And it, it's not necessarily the best way to go about things. Yeah. Um, you, you may have heard that sometimes, yay stats! Okay. <laughs> you may have seen um, uh, a couple of uh, Facebook pages may have like inflated stats. I think Facebook has been doing a little bit better job of killing out the, the bots that have been going around uh, to, to kind of inflate the, the numbers a little bit. But if you ever need to promote uh, your show, the best thing to do is just politely ask your friends, don't spam them with your 
requests on playing Candy Crush. Don't uh, don't do that, please. Uh, yeah. Hey, have you played Candy Crush? And hey, listen to my show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so uh, stats can be extremely helpful in engaging your audience. That's, that's mm. anything you want to talk I guess about. before we get into questions, because this should be the last. Yeah, yeah the, cool. the, the uploading we already kind of really uh, covered because we talked about sticking to the timeline and everything like that. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Because we're we're just starting to branch out into videos, so we're we're not gonna really touch on that yet. Everyone look at camera one. <laughs> <laughs> we we've done two video podcasts so far because we uh, we were very lucky. We we tried getting a Kickstarter out there to help us raise funds to get some more equipment. The Kickstarter failed. <laughs> But no, it didn't fail. It didn't oh, fail. Optimism. It didn't necessarily fail because that camera was actually donated to us by one of the people that wanted to support us Yay. on the Kickstarter. So that's that. That was what we were aiming for was to get a camera anyway. And this guy was like, "Hey, there you go. I'm not using it. Use it until you get something better, and then give it back to me." Cool. That's pretty sweet. All right. So. Anyone have any questions for us? Yeah, let's open up to the floor, Rob. Um, we got some time for, for questions, obviously. So yeah, we'll throw it out to anybody. So yes. Um, I've been podcasting for about a year. I have my my own thing, and I haven't done any in, in the last probably month, uh, month, two months, because it was a solo podcast and all that. And one of the things that I found the hardest to do was getting reach. Uh, when you're doing solely voice work, uh, when you're, you know, you're doing on Audacity, iTunes, whichever. Uh, it's hard as an individual to kind of have that reach and go up. Because people want that familiarity, they want that taste. So YouTube podcasting is becoming more and more prevalent, more and more of a thing. What's your opinion on that? Do you think that uh, more pure, freeform, vocal podcast is where you know people should be staying to, or should they evolve and go into? That's a that's a very very good point. Uh, we live in an age of interactive multimedia. People like to physically see the person across uh, the screen, just so they can have that connection. Um, other times people still love the whole old-fashioned listening to the voice, maybe listening to a car. I know audiobooks is huge, especially when people are driving, and that's one thing I, I take pride in. Um, you take when, pride in driving? I take pride in listening to <laughs> things while I'm driving. I, I barely listen to music anymore, um, unless I find something new that I really like. I'm walking around, I'm always listening to a podcast. When we did, when we did our two video podcasts, we still put up the audio separately. So you give your you give your audience a choice. You say, hey, the audio's still there, but look at this cool video. Uh, there's also another thing where people are more likely to listen to long form audio than they are to watch long form video, and it, it's tough to find that balance between them. People, I put up videos that are 10, 15 minutes long, and people watch three minutes of them and go through. Audio, they'll stick around. They'll do it while they're playing a game, or they'll do it while they're working, and or so a commute. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just tough to judge. It, YouTube is a much lower attention. <laughs> yeah, people nowadays generally do have a low attention span. <laughs> what did you say? What? Where am I? <laughs> Where are my keys? But then again, um, I will also say we would never have gone into video if it wasn't for the audio. It's a, it was a great way to test the waters and see how we can upgrade our show. We, um, we across the streams, we didn't do a, a video segment. We mainly stuck with audio, which uh, I think, again, long form audio is very important. If you know that you'd rather have your listeners listen to a full length show, maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes, or even an hour uh, with guests, but you want to make a face for something, one thing I can recommend is maybe doing short videos. Um, myself and uh, my co host Brendan, who helped create across the streams, uh, as well as uh, Dan Norvelli and Adam Skinner in Toronto. Uh, we like to do comedy shorts. So uh, we've done a few with uh, Bowman Productions about two years ago that, were, that was that was a lot of fun to do and uh, little commercial bits. Uh, even with uh, the crazy uh, ALS ice bucket challenge, you know, throwing something like that out. Uh, but yeah, with when it comes to video, if you keep your segment to maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that's kind of the sweet spot. And I've seen some great successes with podcasts like Voice of the Republic, where they'll videotape their entire uh, Google Hangout session, throw it on YouTube, and it's only 15 minute segments. So try to do an experiment. So I recommend doing a, a maybe a very short um, video segment, but split it up into four parts or five parts, uh, or even three, uh, and then just see how it goes. Because then you'll find if, if uh, the video is there. Um, 
that's that's um, what my recommendation. Also, uh, an idea that we're going to be working with with the next big video podcast is time coding, because then people can jump to you go here at fifteen sixteen. We start into our topics at twenty three ten. We start into our questions, and that gives people something to pop to if that's what they really like about the show. Mm -hmm. And they can avoid the stuff that they may not like or yeah. that they don't really know anything about. It's instantaneous, and then you can share it that way. I know with YouTube, you can share a link with the uh, media time code st start uh, so that it's like, I know it's a 20 minute video, but you can see the best part right here. So that's a very good question. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Who's next? Anybody? Yes. No. What? We have like one minute left. Oh, we have one, one minute, minute left. Oh, oh, my God. Okay, cool. We'll leave it up to, uh, to the last question. Where, who else? What? Yes. Real quick. Real quick. How do you guys feel about podcast hosting services like uh, Podbean or Libsyn? Should you stick to those? Uh, yes. it, you spend a great deal of money trying to get things started up, and it's really hard to get yourself to put more money into doing it. Like You have to buy equipment, you have to do all that, and Podbean, if you're putting up a weekly show, does not have the bandwidth to support it. Yeah. Right, we, uh, a good very quick addition before we have to go is interact with other podcasters. We're, we're a part of different podcasting communities like yeah. Nerdbong, um, what's the other one? Yeah, see, there we go. If you guys uh, also want to, I know we want to uh, answer your questions as much as possible. I have some business cards here with uh, Gmail address. If you want to ask those questions directly to me, be happy to answer them. So yeah, just come see me in the front and I'll yeah, pass and, uh, these around. Come talk to us off of the, uh, the thing and we yeah. can answer any other questions that we didn't have the time to answer here. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Th